Hi, Frank. So what are we doing? Where are you? And what are we going to do? Um, right now, I'm in uh, Egypt, in the Sinai Peninsula. And just behind me, there is a very huge reef. We are close to the Ras Mohammed National Park. Great. So you're going to head down into the water now and uh, show us yeah. via live underwater camera what's happening with the reef, yeah? <laughs> okay, see you later. Thank you so much. Good luck. Don't forget your air, your oxygen. <laughs> going in. Look, look, the camera's going under. It's really cool. We're going under. We're going under. Look at that. Come on, Frank. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Lizzie, come and look at this. <laughs> hey, Frank. <laughs> you did it. Woo. This is fucking hilarious. It's, this is one of the best things we've ever done. We need to put some sound effects. I'll do the sound effects. That's good coral there. I think one third of the uh, of the global um, coral reefs are dead. Humans are so clever. Look what we can do. We can speak from Copenhagen to a coral reef underwater. And yet we can't get our act together to sort out climate change. Scientists think that more than 1.5 million creatures are living in the coral reef. But up today, we only know 10% of all the creatures and we must pay attention that uh, before climate change takes away all the reef we also need the coral reef because it's a breeding zone for all the fishes and it's a very very high spot for biodiversity how important is the coral reef for the functioning of the ocean as a whole so the coral reef and the ocean in general is um, um, a kind of buffer for the co2 emissions of the industry uh, nations. When more CO2 is going to the ocean, we get uh, acidification of the ocean and a lot of creatures will die. So can we ask uh, your friend there who's seen the reef for 27 years, what changes has he seen? There's been definitely some uh, degradation to the reef. Uh, tourism is helping fighting poverty and it's dependent on these coral reefs. So if they go due to climate change, due to an increase of 1.5 degrees, we are going to have a lot of economic disasters and social disasters. More than 1.5 degrees is too much for the coral reef. Because you know that we're here now at COP15 and they're not even trying for 1.5 degrees. They're only trying for two degrees at the, at the maximum and they, it will, they're not going to get that. So that basically means, I think, as the deal stands at the moment, the coral reefs are, are going to all die. Um, that could be the, the result if we follow the, the newest results of the scientists, yes. Hi, yeah, I've been working here in uh, the Red Sea for five years. Things are changing, and uh, if we don't do something about it soon, this little guy is not going to have anywhere to live. I mean, there is a fundamental conundrum here, though, which is uh, if the coral reef dies, then your business is, you know, over. The tourists won't come. But if the tourists keep coming, then they're going to kill the coral reef via the flights. So there's not there's not an easy solution, is there? The coral reef is uh, not only the base for the tourism industry; it's also the base uh, for feeding a lot of people in all over the world. This message is especially going here from Egypt to Copenhagen to to decide to be. Under 2 degrees, under 1.5 degrees, that will save the reef. If they commit us to over 1.5 degrees, that's going to basically kill all the rest of the coral. Yeah, yeah.